Hi, welcome back to part two of our tutorial on modifying movie menu templates in Photoshop Elements. In part one, we actually located the uh, the template, which was no mean task. And now we'll take a look at actually how to modify that template. OK, so here we are back on my main computer. And once again, we can't modify these individual elements here, these individual navigation elements. But that's OK, because in Premiere Elements, we can change the fonts. We can change the font color. We can even change the location of these elements on the menu template. So let's not worry about that right now. But what we want to do is be able to change the background. Now, first, I want to get rid of this overlay. You see these little guides on here. I get rid of those by pressing Control semicolon or on a Mac, Command semicolon. And now I can see my menu more clearly. My background, if you look here underneath all of our navigation, I have my background. Those are the doves. And if you look right above it, there's a little thing that says additional. We can't get into the additional layer set, but we can see what's in there simply by turning it off. Let's see what difference it makes when we turn it off. You see that what it is is sort of a semi-opaque layer to kind of soften the background. Let's get rid of it. It's not a part of our new template. So I just select it and click on the trash can and it's gone. Now I want to replace the background here because I want to make a completely different menu out of this and that's very simple. I have, if I go down here to my photo bin, I have open a picture of a pie and you see that I've sized this pie in this particular case to 768 by 576, approximately the size of a PAL video screen in standard definition. And that'll save me a lot of resizing later. And then it's very simple. I just select the selection tool here or the move tool and drag the picture of the pie onto my new template. When I let go, boop, it's in there. Now let me, I'm just going to control Z that for a second here and show you something. A lot of times Photoshop elements will display in a layout here where you have your photos under tabs. In that case, in order to get the element over from this particular picture to that particular picture, I can just select it here, control A or command A to select it all and copy the layer and then go over here and control V it or command V it to paste it in. Same effect. It's just simpler sometimes when you've got floating windows and I'll resize it as necessary by dragging on the corner handles. There's my background. Now I've got a new background. I can get rid of the old one here. We'll just select it, click on the trash can and it's gone. I'm going to call this one background. Just double click on it, call it background. I don't need to do that. It's good housekeeping. If I'm going to do other things to more advanced things to the template, having that name background does make a difference. And now I've got a new template, a new scene selection template. I'm going to save it and I'm going to save it into a new category. So in this particular case, I'm going to just go up into the categories. Let's go to the general categories. I'm going to call it Apple Pie. I've already made a folder for it, Apple Pie. And I'll change the name of the template to Apple Pie. Notice I'm only changing the name part. I'm leaving the rest of that. That's real important to leave the rest of it as is. And that's really all there is to creating a template. There are just two more elements you need to be aware of that are very, very important. And to see those, I want to switch over to Windows Explorer or Finder go into our folder. In order for Premiere Elements to recognize your template as a true template, it must have two parts. It must have an MM, a main menu, and an SM, a scene menu. Whether or not you also have widescreen and high def, not necessary unless you're going to use those particular formats, but you do need to have a main menu and a scene menu. There is just one other thing you absolutely should have, and that is a download.txt file in this folder. Let me explain to you what that is, but first let's grab it. We'll go out here and grab it from one of the other templates that has already been downloaded. In my case, it's in the slideshows, Wedding Doves. There's that file right there, downloaded.txt. I'm just going to right click on it and copy it. And we'll paste it into my folder. Here's why you need to do that. Premiere Elements 11 downloads your templates as needed, which would be fine if there was actually an Apple Pie template on the Adobe site. There isn't. And this little TXT file tells Premiere Elements, don't download to this folder. I've already got what I need. So if that file isn't in the folder, Premiere Elements will try to download over it and it will erase your entire template. So if you're going to make a template in this online DVD templates area, make sure that your folder has, in addition to a main menu and a scene menu, it has the downloaded.txt file. And then you're good to go. 
Now, if you want to know anything more about these programs and how they work, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have here on moviepicks.com. And if you want to know specifically step-by-step -step how to edit DVD templates or disc templates, movie menu templates, or any of the other things that these programs do, be sure to check out my books, the moviepicks.com guides to Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together, available at Amazon.com and right here at the Movie Picks store. I'm Steve Rossetti. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon.